if I had a quarter for every time someone suggested the need for a vapor barrier, our YouTube channel would be long gone and we'd be living in the Caribbean somewhere. Vapor barrier. Let's talk about it. Naturally in Arizona, where most of my construction experience happened, there is absolutely no need for a vapor barrier. Coming to southeastern Idaho, where the codes are a little bit different, I considered the need for a vapor barrier. As we've built the house, I've made an effort to make the house as airtight as I possibly could, sealing every place I thought there was a potential for air leaks. But then I checked into the standards in the area, and nobody whatsoever uses vapor barriers. But then I took it a step further, and I checked into the national standards when it comes to vapor barrier. And the bottom line is, nobody uses vapor barriers anymore. The years of experience have shown that using a vapor barrier can actually increase the chances of having mold versus just the opposite. But let's think about our application specifically. Our only source of heat is a wood-burning stove. What do wood-burning stoves do? they pull even more of the moisture out of the air. Most of the winter months, the air in fact gets so dry that I have to do something to keep my hands from cracking. Most homes that use wood stoves are often accompanied by a pot of water that sits on top of the stove. I've considered this and I've thought about this and I've researched this and I've tried to steer clear of the topic, but this is a good opportunity to discuss it. In the meantime, I got a phone call from a friend of mine whose hen turkey had 13 chicks. Ronin calls him Bob. Oreo. That's a good name. That's what it is. Yeah, he does. So he's a year. I don't remember what month. We opted for four of these chicks, but they're a little bit young yet to bring up to the ranch. So in a few weeks, we'll get them up here. Back to the house. Eight months out of the year, in our region, we average less than 3% humidity. Through the summertime, we can average as high as 15% humidity, but that's just about it. We do not have humidity like other places, but again, Research has shown that vapor barriers can be more inclined to retain water versus letting the drywall breathe and therefore causing mold than just the opposite. I've taken the time as I put the drywall up to use caulking to seal around the electrical boxes. I've taken time to seal around the lights. I've taken time to do everything I can to keep the heat and the cold in. We don't want the house to be leaky. We want the house to be as airtight as it can. But at the same time, building to the local standards requires that I have venting in certain places in the house.
there's virtually no need for vapor barriers anywhere in the U.S. Code does require that I install what's called green board or mold resistant drywall around the bathroom. Over the years as a plumbing contractor, there have been many times where I found evidence of mold in people's homes, even in Arizona, where it's as dry as can be, we would find mold issues. If you research what's required for mold to grow, it starts with a constant source of moisture. For mold to grow in Arizona, this mold must be constantly fed by some sort of a leak. In the places where I as a plumber would find mold, it would usually be in bathrooms around bathtubs, around showers, around drains that may be leaked, something along these lines. By having the mold resistant drywall around the bathtub, that's step one. In my mind, step two is just a simple way to retain the water that's going to be there. We put the exhaust fan at the highest point in the bathrooms. It's important to use the exhaust fan. Step two will be a vinyl wrap before I install the concrete board and then the tile. Step three is the shower curtain or the glass doors. Naturally, glass doors retain the water better than the shower curtain, especially with kids. I'll do everything I can to keep the water where it's supposed to be. And when there is high humidity, we'll do everything we can to get that humidity out of there. The idea of a vapor barrier is a bit of an old school thought. This is not something that's practiced or has been practiced for a number of years. There may still be regions that building inspectors require them, but it's not here. A long time ago, my dad taught me the importance of the scientific process, or basically the idea of gathering information from qualified sources and then making an objective decision. If and when I've had questions along the way in regard to the building process of my home, I called people that I trusted, that had experience, and that were qualified to answer these questions. After talking to every qualified person, then doing maybe a little bit of internet research, it became very apparent that putting a vapor barrier in our house is a bad idea.
That being said, I do not want mold in my home. Assuming that I've done my job properly and that there is not any water source for mold, we should not have mold anywhere. When I tile around the bathtubs, I will most certainly take time to seal between the bathtubs and the tile as this transition is prone to mold. Over the coming years, I'll be observant and aware of what's going on and do my best to prevent any possibility of this mold occurring. But I feel very good about what we've done thus far. I feel more than confident that putting a vapor barrier in would do more harm than good. Good afternoon. There's Mother Nature telling me to hurry up. Hurry up. Um, by the time I get to Saturday afternoon, I'm just exhausted, I guess. So I'm looking forward to uh, the long weekend, but I'm sure we'll spend it up here. Um, I need to pick up. A bunch more drywall for downstairs. Um, now that the utility room is hung, I need to hung, hang, finish hanging the ceiling, but uh, we can rearrange that. We want to get some shelving that I can keep my tools on and that we'll likely use for uh, food storage, things of that nature later. But uh, things are moving forward. Uh, the sewer line I'm going to leave open for maybe a week or so. I, I, I hope and I, I feel like we're getting to the end of the rain, but I mean, good good gosh, who knows anymore. Uh, trying to predict the weather in Idaho is, is uh, you, you're probably better off playing the lottery. But um, anyway, um, I'm gonna let that dry really well. I do not wanna have any other issues with that sewer uh, as far as bellies are concerned. And so I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna compact it in layers and if I got to leave it open for a week or two, um, that's what I'll do. But uh, we're making good progress. I, I should be, uh, by the end of this week, I would like to hope that, that I've got most of this hung down here, but who knows? Uh, I'm almost done with all the insulation um, in the uh, exterior walls. So at that point, I can really start uh, hanging it and hanging it fast. So anyway, moving forward. Um, I love the storms up here. I've never heard thunder like I've heard it up here. Uh, we seem to have our own little weather systems up here versus uh, in town. And uh, it's, it's quite fun. I will say the grass that's coming up is making the mud a lot easier to deal with. Um, we've had, we had probably an inch and a half of rain in the last two days. And it's not that bad uh, everywhere that I've got grass. It's a pretty obvious statement, but putting all the grass seed that I put down in the last uh, two years, I feel like it's starting to pay dividends, but now it needs to be cut. So that's, that'll be uh, Rhett's summer job. Uh, you know, we got to get a good mower or something like that. But anyway, uh, we're doing good. Everything's doing good. Progress is, is uh, things are moving forward. Upstairs is ready for paint minus the, the laundry and the bathroom. I need to do a couple more coats on each of those and then it's basically done. Uh, that's it. I can't think of anything else. So we're gonna go back into town and uh, pretend that uh, this is a holiday weekend for us. So let's go buddy.